Hi everyone, Melissa here. I am excited to be back to do my Virgo marble nails. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done one of these Zodiac marbles because the last one I did was for my birthday in July. Um, so yeah, it's been a bit and I've had the idea for this one for quite some time. So um, just looking at the color for Virgo, knowing that it was brown, and knowing that Virgo is earth sign, I, I just said I, I want to try and do like a wood grain type marble. Um, and I've wanted to try this, tackle this for a while. And I was thinking, oh, what if I did my, um, I don't even know what to call the marbling, the noise marbling technique, but it's the, um, I haven't named it, but... Uh, it's it's really cool for getting those thinner lines into the marbling so that's what I really wanted wanted to do and then um, I had this other idea and my husband actually helped me with this one because we both do art and and he was like well what if you found a way to like use dip powder as a wash and I was like oh, yes so and if you don't know what a wash is in art um, I'll explain that to you when we get to it but hopefully it's gonna turn out fantastic I have done uh, one test swatch for this because it is a, I mean, it's not, it doesn't take an hour, but it's a time consuming process. And I, time is one of those things I don't have an abundance of uh, at the moment, but I love how this first try came out and, um, and we're going to kind of wing it together today for this and see how it goes. I'm actually going to start with the marble nail today and then, um, build the rest of the mini design from there based on like looking at that completed because I haven't really thought out a, a layout for all the nails yet sometimes it just works out that way so what I'm gonna start with well first the colors I'm gonna be using today I have um, Coco Loco burnished copper and shameless from double dipped I think shameless might be the only one that's still available unfortunately but this was part of the most recent nude collection that she came out with. And it's a little bit of a more like tanned, um, kind of nudie brown, but I think it's going to look good. And then burnished copper is like a deep, deep brown. This is what I'm going to be using for the, to say, the wash part of this technique. So that's not going to be in my um, mar initial marble application part. And then I have um, Patina from Rebel. It's just a really beautiful warm brown and I kind of wanted to add a little warmth into it because I love warmth in the fall. So I'm going to start by building a, um, just like a solid base for before I start adding the marble lines on because it, this technique can easily get filed through and you can end up, um, filing through some of the lines and I don't want to file through to where my natural nail, you know, I, I'm going to try my best not to file through that far, but I just want to add some opacity underneath and some color underneath just in case. So I'm going to do, I think probably just one coat of, of this. I'm going with the lighter color, although these aren't too far off um, in dip form, but I mean like in powder form, once they're on, it's uh, much different. I will say while I have this brush out, as you can see, the tip of it is a little dark. Um, that is actually from the technique I'll be using at the end of this. And I know that there will be questions about what do you do with the brush? Is it going to ruin your brush? And uh, this is actually a really good example of no, it won't. Um, it might be stained for a little bit. You do wipe it off. but. Um, it might be stained for a little bit, but if you saw me applying the liquid, there was no pigment transfer with the liquid. It didn't mess up the layer I did or make it look darker or anything. So um, as long as you have a liquid that's not super easily contaminated for one, uh, but also are, are careful and wipe off as much as you can 
then your your brush should be fine. As long as it's not something you're doing like all the time. All right, while that was drying, I kind of made the decision. I think I'm gonna pull in a fourth color. This is Aspen from Cascade Color Cascade Color Works, and it's just another really pretty light kind of beigey color. I just wanted to add something a little bit lighter than the ones that I had, just for little touches of highlight. Okay, I got that smoothed out. I filed just a little like chunk off right there, but that's okay because the whole area is going to be covered with more stuff anyway. So I'm just going to do a layer of um, the dip base over the top of this, and that's going to dry pretty quickly because of the activator that's in the layers. And then I'm gonna have my nice, smooth surface to work on. Now for this part, I'm gonna be using the Model Ones um, two-in-one because the brush on it is really thin. Um, and I think it's gonna help me get lines that aren't too um, crazy, too thick, which will make it easier to work with. So I'm just going to start, I'm brushing most of the liquid off the brush and I'm just going to kind of come in along the side here and going straight down the nail, just kind of building a little puddle line of base. Let's see, let's go with this color. And then I'll get the pusher end of my, or the scraper end of my cuticle pusher here, and I'm going to like push this against the edge of the little puddle pile, and it's going to like give it dimension, make it pop out a bit, make it thicker, and then also like straighten out and um, thin that line out. Okay, and then I'm gonna go right next to it with another one. And I don't need to make these like perfectly straight because you think of um, wood grain, it's never perfectly straight. I'm kind of watching how this is building up and I'm seeing this this like divot start to build right here it's just starting to appear and I think I'm gonna work with that and try and create almost kind of like a knot like feature um, after I don't know maybe after one more layer so I'll do a layer and build it out higher and push it in more here so I can kind of give area and I don't know we'll see Okay, so for that one, I kind of um, built it like inwards and then also outwards. So I'm just gonna like push this 
in, but not push this part all the way in. Kind of round it out a bit, like it's knotty. And I think I need to let a little more of the powder in, like in this center area because it's not very full there. Okay, I got all of those down and I am obsessed with how this looks right now. So much so that I'm going to take a risk and do something differently than how I did on the one test swatch that I created. I don't want to get rid of all of that dimension. I really don't. I mean, some of it I might need to, but it just looks really cool and rugged and very like, like bar, you know, like treat tree trunky almost like wood grain so my biggest fear is trying something different and screwing it up but what's the worst that could happen I have to you know take this off and start over I mean honestly there are worse things that could happen um, so I'm just going to make sure that some of the lines that I have here are still cleaned up you get build up on your um, water marbling tool or on your scraper you can just file them right off it'll come off and doing this kind of technique you will have that happen so I'm just gonna kind of run through some of these um, areas here All right now this is reminding me of like a ceramics project I did in high school <laughs> I just, I just had a core memory unlocked. All right, I'm just gonna like gently kind of um, file away some of the rougher stuff on top. Okay, for this next part, I'm a little frightened now because um, this kind of requires me to do more filing but I also think that doing this part is going to give it those um, kind of shadows that are created by the unevenness that is on here. It just creates these like beautiful shadows that give it a more realistic look. And I'm hoping this um, in those cracks is gonna add that same look. So when you are doing um, a wash for something, it's basically like a thinned out version of the uh, pigment or the color so that it just goes into the cracks and fills those in with that color and then um, you generally with you know paint you would wipe the rest away and just have you could have that darkness just in the cracks I can't just wipe this away so I have to like file the upper layers away and we'll see how that works out so I am taking this brush with liquid on it and I'm just gonna gently tap into the powder with that and pick some up and then use it to try and brush that 
dark powder into the cracks. All right, I'm gonna give that a little wipe and see. Okay, so I do like the look of this, but I can't get out of my head that I loved, I just loved it so much um, before I filed it. So I, I think instead of redoing this, because I still think this looks really cool, I like the look of it, and I think it's gonna look even better once um, I put a clear coat on and finish it and stuff. But I think I'll make like a reel, um, a TikTok, a reel, just doing the lines and then just encapsulating that with clear because I kind of need to see what that would have looked like. I feel like um, my my brain won't stop wondering. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to do it when I'm done with this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of clear on this now and then... Um, figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of the nails. I, I may just keep it pretty simple. I like, I really love patina. I think I'm gonna do patina and then um, maybe I'll just do a accent shameless. So some patina and some shameless, but let me see how this is all finished up. Okay, so for the other nails, yes, I used patina. And then for this one, I actually started with two dips of Aspen and then it was pulling a little too um, taupe a little too taupey, so I used a couple dips of Shameless to pull it back towards more of a um, brown color and, and further away from the gray tone, grayish, grayish kind of color. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just activate all of this and then file them. And then I think I'm gonna do a matte top coat on these. All right, that matte top turned out just perfect. I still have a little bit of oil on them. That's kind of messing them up, but the matte finish is nice and smooth, so I am so happy. And I love this look. I love this um, wood gray nail. I can't wait to do this. Like I said, I'm gonna do this again and just kind of encapsulate and see what kind of difference it makes. Because um, I thought the look before I filed it was just so cool. So we'll see how that comes out. But regardless, I think this is super cool. It looks like wood grain. I think it's perfect for Virgo. And I hope that all my Virgo friends out there love it. And that you're happy with it. Um, as always, thank you for joining me and hanging out while I do this. And don't forget to like um, my videos when you watch them. And subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time.